Hey, what's your stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to talk about stream splitting or you know, removing the babies from the, the, the tank, the breeding tank. And in this video, you know, I will be uh, showcasing how I actually do the selection uh, in the sense that how do I actually remove the babies, um, which is a very different method from resetting because resetting, we actually use uh, breeder box to actually remove the, the, the streams from, from the tank and then uh, relocate them. Uh, however, for removing the babies, we will still have to do the, the manual method whereby uh, you remove the, the streamlets uh, individually. So I think that's uh, in essence, uh, you know, the reason why we do what we do is because, you know, removing the babies from the, from the tank, you actually uh, you know, split them from the very beginning which you continue to maintain the, the the breeding stock so this is not really selective breeding per se because selective breeding is really about you know taking the traits that you you really want uh, and then breeding them uh, to achieve a certain desired result and the way that we do this you know you have you know few males few females this is really not about selective breeding uh, per se you know in, in a very strict term uh, selective breeding really is about uh, taking one uh, one male and one female and then crossing them and then from there you have the two genomes and then you start to cross uh, different different streams together again uh, what we are actually doing here is just breeding so a lot of us we are actually breeding streams uh, where we have maybe two males five females ten females whatever it is uh, we are actually breeding them. So once we breed them, we have to remove the babies. So removing the babies, uh, we term it removing the babies to a grow up tank, or we call it splitting in the sense that uh, we take this uh, flower head uh, PRL as an example. Uh, you can actually see that, you know, I'm just going to move this camera uh, closer and just going to uh, show you guys how these are some of the things that uh, is being done. So over here, you can actually see that the, the streamlets are actually removed. Not all the streamlets are removed. Uh, however, you know, majority of the streamlets has been removed. As you can actually see that, you know, uh, from here, uh, we actually do the selection. So usually what we do is that we feed them. Uh, we feed them with uh, food first. And then after that, when they all start to come out, uh, then we start to, you know, uh, net the, the streamlets one by one. And, uh, usually before they get too big uh, streamlets are actually fairly simple or fairly easy to actually net them because they generally do not know what a net is until a much uh, adult stage where they get net quite a lot and then they, they realize that uh, it's, it's actually something that they do not really like to to, to actually see so uh, streamlets are actually fairly simple to actually net them out and you can actually net them out fairly quickly as well so what I've do, I'm doing here is actually uh, to remove the babies and then at the same time actually splitting them uh, and grading them uh, between uh, uh, a better flower head and not a better flower head. So what does that mean? It means that at the very beginning I'm already splitting them uh, in a sense that I do not want any cross breeding that happen uh, unintentionally. I want the cross breeding to be done uh, intentionally. So I think that's where uh, we actually want to uh, differentiate in terms of getting and maintaining the line so that is uh, really what it is uh, netting them and splitting them into a different different um, you know breeder box and then uh, putting the individual breeder box to their respective tank uh, so i have a tank that you know with all the flower heads grown up uh, grow up flower head tank so that i will remove it to there and then for the rest of it which may or may not be looking uh, so much towards the flower head type, I will then move on, uh, move it to the normal PRL tank. So this is how uh, we continue to maintain the line and that will actually help us uh, in the long run. Uh, the reason is because if let's say we are going to do a cross breeding project or a selective breeding project, we will know then uh, definitely uh, what type of streams we actually have. Uh, in, in the sense that what type of streams we actually have is because if for example, if you start to breed them and then you get a lot of other types of streams other than PRL, then like for example, if you get uh, you get King Kong from uh, PRL, you get uh, other type of streams from from you know from from PRL. Then, if you use that to do your crossbreeding project, you will then get the 
undesirable traits. For example, if let's say there's a red king kong blood in there, you get the red king kong genetics into your crossbreeding project, which means that this is not your ideal or your direction of the crossbreeding project. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of breeders think that, you know, uh, as long as I start to mix them together, you will get a, a, a different result. So I think one of the more important uh, aspect over here is that you will have to have a bred out tank, meaning that you will maintain that line uh, so that you will always have that two or the two streams uh, where you can actually use them uh, to for, for your crossbreeding project. So I think that is in itself something that we will uh, have to look at or have to understand because uh, just getting streams and then crossing them will not actually get to where you actually want to want to be. So crossbreeding project uh, is something very, um, I would say at a much later stage where you have to do selective breeding. Selective breeding is just like I've mentioned in the earlier comment is that you get two desirable traits that you want to cross them together to achieve an outcome. And if there's an underlying, uh, you know, uh, phenom where, or not, not phenom, where you have an underlying uh, recessive gene, which means that it, it does not come out uh, or appear from, from uh, its appearance. However, the recessive genes are being brought forward to uh, the, the crossbreeding project, then it will create a lot of question mark in terms of your uh, type of strings that you are actually trying to cross them with. So what does selective breeding mean? Selective breeding really means uh, taking two of the desirable traits uh, to actually get them together. So over here, we will show you an example. So over here, you can actually see that uh, from a selective breeding perspective, a project that we want to uh, you know, get the traits of this stream. For example, this stream has uh, very nice colors. Uh, although it's a fairly common stream, you know, it is uh, really a, a red stardust and then they throw out the, the zebra printo type of uh, coloration. And that's the reason why, you know, I find that this, this color is, is, just let me try to pen this, uh, get it in focus. You can actually see the colors of this are, this is really, really, really dark in, in the sense that it's going to brighten this up a little bit. It's trying to run away. You can actually see that. The colors are really really nice and but this pattern is is fairly common in the sense that i think a lot of uh, you guys you know who have been breeding red stardust stream uh, you actually get this uh, patterns uh, fairly easily and however on this this stream it actually shows a really orangey color uh, which i actually want to to get uh, or extract the the coloration from here and then uh, you know because this is a male, this is a male, so I actually pair it with a, a female that is actually on the other side, just gonna show you guys uh, over here. So this is a female that's gonna pair. It doesn't have that same uh, orange color, uh, you know, coloration on, on it. However, you actually uh, have to try with what you have on hand. And over here, you can actually see that, oh, I'm just gonna, yeah, you can actually see that, you know, the colors of this is, is really awesome. Uh, however, I only have one of this uh, after breeding so so many of them uh, and it is really nice to, to keep that and uh, you know having that uh, you know trying to get the the colors maintained throughout this uh, brood will, will will then be a a, a project that I'm uh, embarking on uh, is this uh, nothing fancy um, to actually show you guys that uh, Projects such as this, uh, very simple ones, uh, can also be very rewarding in the sense that you can actually maintain or try to see what's the outcome of the stream uh, and try to maintain the line or the maintain the coloration or the desired coloration that you actually want. Uh, so it doesn't mean that uh, crossbreeding projects has to be something that is uh, entirely new. It can always still be uh, improving the current status of the, uh, the stream uh, and to elevate the colorations and to build on the you know the patterns and the striations on the, on the body and the legs, I think that in itself will also be something that uh, worth working on. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to. I mean, a lot of breeders are trying to chase for the newest and the greatest. And I, one of the reasons for doing that is, uh, if you have a new stream, of course, then you'll be able to sell at a much higher price. Um, however, you know it. 
in terms of the joy of keeping our breeding streams, there are a lot of uh, breeders out there who, who truly want to enjoy breeding streams and crossbreeding them. Uh, however, trying to understand to crossbreed a project uh, will still have to come from the very fundamental of understanding having a colony of, uh, of two that you are going to use. For example, if you're going to use a Red Stardust uh, as one of the projects or one of the streams that you're going to use, then you definitely will have to have a uh, tank that contains or continue to have that line so that you can always use them for further or other purposes. So that's the reason why, you know, uh, from the very beginning, we will need to have tanks of, uh, of the current streams that you are actually keeping uh, with a few different types of uh, different, different tanks so that, you know, you will always have a continuous supply of the streams uh, in itself. So with that, then you will be able to use them and cross breed, breed with other streams. If you are looking to, you know, get much better streams, then the selective breeding process will happen after the split. As you can see over here, is it's actually a, a grow up uh, mainline red stardust tank uh, where you can actually see that the, the, the bred out rates of the uh, babies are actually fairly, uh, fairly equal and they look you know, magnificent in, in the sense that comparing this to a secondary line uh, red stardust, it will not have the consistency and the patterns on this. So for red stardust, we are looking at uh, clear consistency in terms of the stripes, uh, the uh, face patterns, and of course, you know, the, the body spots as well. Legs definitely is one of the things that we always look forward to. Uh, so with that, you know, when we have this, uh, you know, grow up tank from here, then we can start to look at, you know, splitting them and then selective breeding. Selective breeding, for example, if I would like to uh, make it much better in the sense that make it even stronger or cross breeding it back to the parents then we will use one of this either a male or a female to cross it back to the parents so the question still remains if we should use a male and cross it with a female of a, another type or should I use a female to cross uh, to another type of male so there, there is no hard and fast rule because genomes are, you know, it's, it's something not cast in stone in the sense that there are a lot of uh, genetics uh, permutations. So with that, you know, what I would really recommend or advise is that if you really like to try projects such as crossbreeding, you would need to have a lot of more tanks, uh, project tanks, where you can actually have uh, multiple tanks of the same same type of crosses, meaning that you can have, uh, for example, 10 tanks, and then from the 10 tanks, out of the five, you do the same male cross female of the same type. It means uh, a male, let's, for example, a male red stardust cross with a, a female pinto, for example, and then you multiply that with a multiple number of tanks so that you can actually progress or you can have. Um, you can save a lot more time in that sense. And then for the next five tanks, you can do the opposite, where you have female Pintos and male Red Stardust. So, so you get that uh, good combination and a different blend uh, between both. And then when the babies come out, then you'll be able to actually see what's the outcome of it. So that is an example of uh, a breeding project, for example. So you can actually look at uh, tailor tailoring what you actually want to achieve in terms of a cross breeding project and then you multiply that with the number of tanks because with the n higher number of tanks you can actually get a more success rate uh, you will get you know because time is required for cross breeding projects you need to get them to get buried and then after that the babies and then you cross it back to the parents and usually it takes one or two years to actually see some results if not none at all because uh, <clears throat> when I speak to some of the geneticists they actually told me that you know the way that we do selective breeding and trying to create new streams is really a draw of luck and you know uh, finding a pin in a, in, in a haystack in in a sense uh, the reason is because the the chromosomes for it to actually uh, mutate uh, it takes some some luck in that sense so uh, having said that you know having new streams will always definitely increase your chances of uh, injecting new possibilities for the future. So keep trying and do not give up. 
so f thank you very much for watching this video you know uh you know really appreciate the the support so far and uh, definitely uh you know thanks for all the kind words and the support uh, for stream century so for those who like this video please remember to give a thumbs up and for those who are new to this channel please remember to subscribe and then until next time peace out